Before we continue, I'd like to thank Coopered for sponsoring today's video. If you don't already know, Coopered is one of the best coupon sites in the world. If you love a good deal, then you must check them out. Coopert.com is one of the best destinations to get online coupons, deals, and special offers. And it works with over 6,000 plus stores, such as Shine, Macy's, Target, Amazon, eBay, AliExpress, Walmart, H&M, Nike, and so much more. You can find the latest coupons, exclusive vouchers, promotions, and discounts for the most popular online stores and retailers using Coopert. And the best part is, it's absolutely free to use and works in seconds. With just one click, Coopert will search for the coupons automatically and apply the best deal to your card instantly. And if you activate the Activate Cash Back button, you can get up to 20% cash back. And to me, that's a great deal. If all this sounds good to you, I highly recommend you check them out by using my exclusive link to freely download the Coopert browser extension. The link is in the description. Why do rich people only have rich friends? One reason is, the rich choose their friends wisely. It's no coincidence that we see rich people having only rich friends. Two of the wealthiest men on earth, Mr. Warren Buffett and Bill Gates, have been friends for almost 30 years now. Over the years, they've shared many ideas together, partnered with each other for philanthropic causes, and have been mutual mentors to each other. Both men agree that choosing the right friends and surrounding yourself with the right company is crucial for success. You'll move in the direction of the people you associate with, says Buffett, so it's important to associate with people that are better than yourself. You want to associate with people who are the kind of person you'd like to be. Gates also echoes the same feelings, as he realizes the importance of having friends who are willing to guide him in the right direction. Some friends challenge you about things you're doing, and that level of intimacy is great, he says. It's really through Melinda and seeing other people I realized, okay, it's really worth the investment to have those people, as you're always there to help them and vice versa. There's a very old and common proverb that states, a man is known by the company he keeps. If a person is good, but he constantly associates with bad company or a bad group of friends, there will eventually come a time when that bad group of friends will start influencing his actions and behaviors. This ties back to the foundations of simple human behavior or psychology. A human being is in constant need of recognition and innately craves meaningful relationships. From the earliest moments of our lives, we crave respect and affection from everyone around us. Our parents and immediate family become the very first social circle to give us recognition, respect, and affection. Therefore, their likes and dislikes influence what we do as kids to gain their recognition and admiration. Later, this social circle moves to our colleagues and friends at a school or university level as we spend more time with them. We tend to influence our behaviors and actions in a way that earns recognition from the social circle we most closely associate with. That is why it's important to teach your children at a very early age to keep away from bad company and to associate themselves with positive and aspiring people instead. Rich parents are very good at teaching their children this important lesson at a young age. So, Thomas C. Corley, the writer of the book called Change Your Habits, Change Your Life, conducts extensive research on how the rich folks choose their friends differently from the rest of us. The people you associate with on a regular basis determines the circumstances of your life. According to Thomas's research for the book, in which he interviewed 177 self-made millionaires over a period of five years, long before they had become rich, he found out that the rich people made an intentional and a conscientious effort to only forge relationships with people they aspired to be, extremely successful individuals and other rich people. This was one of the hallmarks of wealth and success. Another treat is that people had somehow broken free from the human tendency to unconsciously forge relationships with others. They found a way to associate themselves with only positive and good company. The average person will form relationships unconsciously and will unknowingly seek out people they feel the most comfortable with. Therefore, they usually find themselves in mixed company with people who have bad habits, weak work ethic, similar mental outlook, and other shared characteristics. There's no need to blindly form such relationships that drag one down. 
you can do what the rich people do and create a few but meaningful relationships with others who share one or more of the following traits. Good habits, positive mental outlook, dependable, financially stable, hard work ethic, strong willpower, extremely determined, passionate and enthusiastic, encouraging attitude. These are the traits that you should look for in a person. These are the habits of people who will be highly successful in whatever they do in the future and also become wealthy. If you associate yourself with such people and aspire to be like them day in and day out, you will also find yourself to do quite well in life as you pick up on some of their good habits and traits. Let's now look at the difference between a poor mentality and a rich mentality. Another reason why the rich will have rich friends is because they share similar mindsets and attitudes towards life. Robert Kiyosaki does a terrific job in explaining the difference between the rich and poor mindsets in his book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Kiyosaki compared his two dads, his biological father, who was the poor dad, and his friend Mike's father, the rich dad. His rich dad, who had not even completed the eighth grade, is a wealthy entrepreneur and one of the richest men in Hawaii. His poor dad, who is a PhD from Stanford, is an employee of the government and earns a high income with benefits, but still struggles to pay the bills. So, what is the difference between the mindset of the rich and the poor? 1. The poor work for money, while the rich do not work for money. Instead, the rich make money work for them. The rich are entrepreneurial and capitalize on opportunities. The poor will be overcome primarily by two kinds of emotions, fear and greed. The fear of being without money and therefore not able to take any risks in life and being miserable in living paycheck to paycheck. Their greed will be represented by their longing of all the luxurious items money can buy. They will crave for the short-term happiness that these materials will bring to them in life. 2. Rich people build assets while poor people acquire liabilities. The rich will focus more on building their assets, which in return will generate them money. The poor will pay themselves first by buying a new watch, a car, etc. and have little or no savings. They will be struggling with credit card debt as they're spending more than they earn just to maintain the lavish lifestyle they're used to. 3. The rich align their habits and emotions. The mindset of the rich is completely different. The poor will say, we cannot afford to build wealth. The rich will say, what can I do so that I can afford it? The poor will let doubts and thoughts of doom and gloom paralyze them into inaction. The rich will have no fear of losing money and will capitalize on opportunities more. The poor will think he knows everything and will be burdened by his own arrogance, whereas the rich will be more open-minded and willing to learn more. 4. The rich minimize taxes and use the power of corporations. The rich will use financial advisors who have financial IQ to maneuver the system to protect their assets and minimize taxes. The poor employee will earn his salary, pay income tax on it, and then spend the remaining portion of his income. The rich, who owns a corporation, earns income, spends on his business activities, and then gets taxed on the remaining amount. These are some of the ways in which the mindset of the rich differs with that of the poor. A rich person will be very particular about the relationships he forms and will consciously only build relationships with people of the same mindset that he has towards life. He associates himself with people he would aspire to be like instead of people who bring him down. Changing your habits. Having rich friends is not a sign that the rich discriminate with the poor and do not feel that they are their equals. A person and his group of friends might be starting off with their respective lives without any money. But because all of them share good traits and have a rich mentality, as described by Robert Kiyosaki, they might eventually build wealth over time. To an outsider, it might seem like they're a part of some rich boys club for which you need to be rich to be a part of. But in fact, these are people just like you and me. The only difference is that they, all throughout their lives, have remained focused and have only associated themselves with a good company of people with a positive and a rich mentality as well. Therefore, they do not have bad relationships or people associated in their lives that bring them down. In short, if you keep good company, acquire good traits and habits from them, develop a rich mentality, you'll also start noticing that you've started building wealth and all of a sudden, you'll begin to attract like-minded people. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this video useful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. 
It really helps us out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you want more videos like this, why not subscribe to our channel? Anyway guys, have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next one.